In this video, we're going to learn how to do search based RAG or retrieval augmented generation. So this is pretty similar to normal RAG, but instead of creating vectors from chunks of documents and using vector search to find the appropriate match, we're just going to do full text search on the document chunks instead. So this is an idea that I got from Simon Willison's blog, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So we're going to launch IPython and then we're going to be using the transcript of an episode of the This Day in AI podcast. So we're gonna read in a file that has that transcript and then we'll use the rich console to just have a quick look at what it has in there. So you can see they start off by talking about Claude Sonnet 3.5 and then they talk about various other AI news and there's about 60 minutes worth of content in here. Okay, so now we're going to import from Langchain Text Splitters the recursive character text splitter class. And we're going to initialize this. And what we'll be using it for is to chop up that big transcript of text into smaller chunks of around 300 characters in size. So let's call the create documents function passing in our text and we'll have a look. You can see how many documents we've got back. So it's chopped it up into 208 chunks and we can have a look at the first one. And you can see in there we've got a document and it's got page content and that's basically the first couple of sentences of the episode. What we're going to do now is store this somewhere. Now you can store this in whichever database you prefer. In this video we're going to look at DuckDB. So we're going to say duckdb.connect and we're going to give it a folder where it's going to store this database. We'll call it podcasts.duckdb and then we're going to create ourselves a table called podcast transcript. We'll have an ID, an episode, a paragraph and then the text is going to be the actual chunk itself. And then we'll iterate over our documents and we're going to call the, the execute function insert into podcast transcript. We'll give it four parameters and those are going to be a UID. I'll give it an episode number which is 68, the index, the paragraph index, which number did it come in in order and then the content itself. And then we can do a query against that podcast transcript table to see what's in there. And you can see the, this is basically the beginning uh, of the podcast. Now we're going to do some querying against the text field and we could just do it directly to be honest because it's very small amounts of data but I want to show you the full text search extension. So we're going to install that and then load it and then we're going to create ourselves a full text search index. So we need to give it the table name. We need to say what's the ID column and then which column or columns do you want to have indexed. So we've only got one so we're just going to say text and we'll run that. And now we can update our previous query to call FDS main podcast transcript dot match BM25. So that's the tech, the algorithm that it's using for full text search. We'll pass in the ID and then we'll say our search term is going to be Claude Sonnet. And then we'll just also update it so that if there's, if there's no match, if there's no score, i.e. it didn't match that particular document, we're going to take it out. And you can see it comes back. So these are in sort of ranking order, the chunks of text that are talking about Claude Sonnet. Let's put that into a function. So we'll call it query store. We'll pass in a search query and then a limit. We'll update it so the term is going to be parameterized. We'll also update the limit to be parameterized and then we'll pass in our param. So search term and limit. And let's have a look what happens if we call that function with Apple AI and you can see it comes back. So it's got a bunch of the chunks around where they were talking about Apple releasing AI, which was a few weeks ago. Now what we need to do is kind of glue these things together. So normally people are going to be using this, say, from a chatbot of some sort, and they're going to ask a question. And we want to kind of pull out the key terms or key phrases. Now in Simon's blog post, he does that using Claude Sonnet, and he just writes like a normal kind of prompt. Uh, I've been using a library called Gliner uh, for this. So Gliner has an update. Uh, which allows it to do multiple different tasks. So it was previously just for entity extraction, but now it can do other stuff as well. So we're going to initialize Gliner and then we're going to create ourselves a function called extract search terms. And we're going to give it a prompt. So we'll say find important terms in this text. I've kind of been playing around with what this exact phrasing should be. So I've tried keywords, I've tried entities, but terms seems to work the best. We'll initialize the prompt with the question. We'll say the labels that we want to extract is a match. So that means it matches whatever you've asked it to do. And then we're going to return the text entry and then it'll be from iterating over the results of predict entities passing in the input and the labels. Let's have a look what happens if we call that. So they mentioned something called focus mode. So let's say what is focus mode and what's its importance is going to be our question. We'll extract the search terms and then you can see it comes back just an array of focus mode. Let's do another one. So we'll update it. What do they say about Apple AI and OpenAI? And you see this time it's come up with two. So it's Apple AI and OpenAI. Now I wouldn't say it works perfectly, but it does a reasonably good job. But if you don't like how Gliner is doing it, you can sub that out and put in an LLM instead. 
Let's now have a look if we call the query store with the search term array that we've got. And then we'll have a look at the results. And you can see it comes back with, the, with that stuff about the Apple devices, but you can then see the second result is now about, it's kind of about OpenAI and Claude. Uh, so it's got, it's got kind of a mix of, of different chunks. Now we're gonna glue this all together. So we wanna go, we're gonna launch ourselves a Llama server and we're gonna be running the Mistral 7B version three model. So we'll start that up and you can see it's running on port 8080 on localhost. So let's come back to IPython and we're gonna use the OpenAI library. So we'll import OpenAI from OpenAI and then we'll initialize that giving it a base URL which needs to be localhost 8080b1 and then the API key can be whatever you want but it does need to be there. Now we're gonna create ourselves another function. So this one's gonna be generate answer and it's gonna take in a search query and a search result. And we'll have a template, you are a helpful assistant, etc. If you don't know the answer, simply state that you don't know. We'll then pass in our context and then we'll have our question. And then we'll call uh, on our LLM, we'll call the create, we'll give it a model name. It doesn't really matter what you give it there. And then the messages, and that's gonna have a role user. And then the content is gonna be coming from the, from the database, the database result. And then it will have our question kind of put in there as well. And that's gonna be search query. And we'll tell it to stream the response. And then we'll iterate over the stream and yield it back uh, out from the function. And now let's put everything together. So we're gonna start with our question. What is focus mode? What's its importance? We'll call our extract search terms function. We'll then call query store with the output of that. Then we'll call generate answer passing in the question and the search result. And then we're gonna iterate over the stream and print it out to the page. And you can see it comes back, focus mode in the context provided, seems to refer to a user interface feature in AI. So this is a this is actually a Claude uh, feature in, in particular, but it's done a pretty good job there. Let's try another question. So do the speakers prefer OpenAI or Claude? And you can see this time it comes back. It doesn't directly compare them, but it seems to be that they are, they are preferring uh, Claude. Uh, and they don't really like that OpenAI's releases seem to be kind of more on uh, generating media attention rather than actually letting people use the feature. So this is pretty good, yes. Yeah, so from listening to the episode, uh, this is correct. Uh, so if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here, where we just have a look at how to do normal rag with, with the vectors on your own machine.